recently seen that William Shatner, famously Captain Kirk in Star Trek, has been into space and back and had some pretty profound experiences along the way. And this has led me to discover something called the overview effect, which I'd like to bring into the equation today with regards to the way we see quantum mechanics and relate it to you and I in terms that we might be able to appreciate, as I did this morning, getting up, bouncing on here, drawing this, and making this video. Now, E stands for energy, yep. In most scientific contexts, E equals energy. So we can see from that that E is pretty much everything that we've got to work with in terms of our existence. The overview effect enables us to appreciate our position in space-time. Energy is very important in that respect because we have only a certain amount of energy to work with. We have kinetic energy, we have working energy, we have electromagnetic energy, and we have various other kinds of energy which we don't yet fully understand. So let's consider that in our overview context of everything that we're looking at here. Mm. I don't really want to write this one down, but I'm going to because we're going to have to face it some point in time. Ego. Ego is a really important problem. Because on the one hand, ego is extremely useful. It enables us to shore up our confidence and present to other people, to discuss things um, with some measure of authority when needs be. But it's also a real problem in that it makes us believe we are bigger than we really are. And in a planetary global context, as you've seen from the results, this has caused some heavy catastrophes. <laughs> it's let's not put too fine a point on it. What drives the bus at the moment in a planetary format is this. We know that. We deep down know that everything that's happening around us in the corruption and absolution stakes is ego driven. So not only is ego a beneficial balancing act that we have to kind of maintain in order to be able to get through our lives as singularities, as singular units in our own right, with the energy therein to be able to express and do all these things that matter to us with our existence, we also have to be very careful that this doesn't get in the way. Now, Something else I'm going to put on the E here is because X is an extrapolation. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Sorry, I don't get my words out. Um, e e extrapolate, the word itself. E ex extra potential, in other words. The, the, the X prefix on a word makes it bigger than. And exoplanets are more than ordinary planets. They are planets that can support life. So therefore, extra exoplanets, you know, bigger than. So this, this prefix is quite important to us. And I've put it here because it, it's a kind of an, an equaling system with the overview effect that we get when we're actually put in a situation which is perhaps more constructive. Now, uh, Neil Armstrong, on one of his moon landings with Buzz Aldrin uh, as, as, his, as his companion, as it were, uh, famously put his thumb in front of what he could see of the Earth, which was a tiny pea-sized blue planet, and said, I felt really small. Now, he, he could have said, I felt huge because there's this tiny little planet there and I felt, but no, no. The overview effect gives the, gives the sensation of smallness, of being inconsequential, and yet part of something that is so huge and complete that somehow it's important. If you read William Shatner's account of what happened when he came back, which I very, very strongly recommend, then you'll see the effect is deeply profound. It's deeply felt. So I'm going to go on to S now because S 
is for science. S is for science, and science is trapped in some uh, treacly soup of its own making in a lot of respects, I believe, and I'm sure that there are a lot of other people who believe that too, and there are a lot of scientists who would argue with me and say, no, it isn't, it's, it, it's it. who are you to talk, because you're not a scientist and you don't have qualifications, and I've heard it all before, mate, it's okay, I can cope. <laughs> S is a, a, a letter that is put in front of a lot of words uh, that begin with this one. Super. Superposition, superlative, uh, supernatural. Oh, let's not use that one in case we get accused of woo. Um, but nevertheless, super, again, like X, it's bigger than, it's expanding. It's, it's more than the sum of its original parts. And the reason why I needed to put this together on this board is completely unknown to me, to be quite honest with you. I never know when I put these boards together what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, or how it's going to turn out. It, I'm winging it because I know that there is important stuff in here and I know from the feedback I get that it's important stuff not just to me but to you as well. So that's why we have to bring these things together and uh, make some kind of effort in our lives to understand them and understand what's going on. And in my feeling, this overview effect is really quite important. Okay, so after the interruption by an insurance company on the phone, let's get back to this. Um, I want to put another word here on S. Sentient. We are all sentient. So is everything else that lives, breathes, and, and, and generally, you, you know, feels things. Sentience is a feeling of something. It's the ability to comprehend your environment, to respond to your environment, and to feel things. And now, in our context as, as human beings, we share something with a, a lot of other animals, and that belongs in the in the E category. And that thing that we share with other animals is emotion. Now, if you break that word down, you've got an E for energy in front of motion, which is motion, obviously. And motion is movement. It's the moving forward of something. So as we move through life, we experience a lot of this stuff, emotion, and we deal with it somehow. Some deal with it better than others. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there who deal with it darn sight better than I do. But never mind, that's okay, because everybody's different. Everybody is unique. Everybody, in other words, is a singularity. We have responsibilities and duties to other than ourselves. And this is another part of the overview effect that comes into play when people crash back down to planet Earth the responsibility for the oneness of the planet doesn't go amiss when it comes to actually viewing the planet from a distance or seeing, as William Shatner did, this thin veil of a blue blanket that wraps over our exoplanet and its existence and looks after us and protects us. It's very thin, it's, it's so inconsequential that you can't even touch it, but we are merrily doing a lot of damage to it along the way because we've got this big problem. We haven't got one of these, in other words. Now, just because science hasn't caught up with the fact that we don't have an overview of it effect yet, doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't be putting one in place. And that's where we come to. The last of these letters. A P is for pseudoscience. I love pseudoscience and I'm going to be doing a video on that very subject soon. So please subscribe to this channel and keep an eye out for that because if you like what I do, you're going to love that one and you're going to adore series three. So let's just get on with the, with the show here and see what else begins with P because P is obviously quite an important letter in, in, in the context of this. We have a planet, after all, and we named it a planet because there are planetary systems. There are planes of existence as well. So the plane part of planet could be a bit of a clue. Let's look at our own language and see how many clues are in the language as, that we already use as to what's going on here. 
because there is a lot of stuff that we already have assigned words to that link together. There are three meanings to the word present. There's the present that we exist in, there's a the present that we give, and, and you're present. You're present here, I'm present here, and so let's all be present with this. Yeah, <laughs> why not? So, uh, I'll put that in as well. Um, another word that's assigned to this letter that's very commonly would link with this thread is perception. Now, our perception of the world is extremely limited. And this is the one really where the crux of the matter lies, in my opinion. We have got a problem because we do not have an overview effect as a standard default system of thinking. We have an ego-driven, uh, singular viewpoint on the world as a default mechanism of our way of thinking. And this produces something of a problem because we can't relate to the oneness of the planet, our global responsibility, if you like, as William Shatner and the astronauts uh, and, and everybody who has gone into space has presumably experienced, we instead see it from a very, very narrow point of view, our own houses, our own social system, uh, our, our own immediate environment. If we're lucky, we might go abroad sometimes, you know? If you go to Australia, that's the other side of the world. You're really lucky. Uh, but even so, you're just trotting out to another part of the planet and trotting back again to the safety of your own box. And this is our problem. Even if you are an academically papered scientist with PhDs and Nobel Prizes, you're still confined to your immediate environment and the observation factors that go with being constrained. Yeah, let's use that word, constrained, into that box. This is where quantum mechanics comes in. Because my feeling, and the feeling of a lot of other people, is that quantum mechanics needs a little bit of a different overview from the one that it's being given at the moment. Science can renormalize and put things into constants and, 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 and constraint boxes all at once, but it cannot bulk the fact that we have this superposition problem running through the whole thread. So uh, without going into a lot on superposition, because there are other videos that cover that and, um, and you can look it up on your search engine. Please look everything up on your search engine and do your research. Find stuff out. It's important. It means something. With this thread running through the whole lot, quantum mechanics begs different questions. It wants to be seen from outside the box. So if you're looking into the strangeness of quark matter, talk about strangeness. I went to a conference where strangeness wasn't even mentioned in the entire conference. And yet the title of the conference was Strangeness in Quark Matter. Talk about stuff that's outside the box. Let's bring some overview effect into the quantum world as much as it's needed in the global context. So with that, I'm going to love you loads and leave you to your own explorations. Have fun. Subscribe to me on this channel because there's loads more to come and I'm sure you're going to find it exciting and interesting. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye.